Hey coders, let's get into AI today and I'm going to show you how to install DeepSeek, Llama, any AI model that you want onto your local machine right here. As you see right here, I have the Raspberry Pi using the Pyraman 5 case. If you haven't watched this video yet, go check it out. I just dropped a video on this build. It's a very fun and cool little build that I did. Go check that out. But I'm going to run DeepSeek on my, my little mini PC right there as well as my MacBook Pro with the M2 chip. And you're gonna see the performance issues on it, like the performance differences you're gonna see because this one only has eight gigabytes of memory. This one has like 32 gigabytes. So you're gonna see that performance difference. But as well as I'm gonna show you how to program AI. And uh, when I first looked into this, I thought it was difficult, but it turns out to be very easy. So I'm gonna do some Next.js programming with AI, with DeepSeek, all of that. I'm gonna do some image manipulations. And then you're going to see how easy it is to run locally on your own machine at home without even connecting to Wi-Fi, the internet, anything. You can run all this locally. You can feel safe about your data. Let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is open up your web browser and go to olama.com. Very easy, olama.com right here. You're going to click on download and download the version for your OS. It offers Mac OS, Linux, or Windows. I'm running Linux on the Raspberry Pi right now, so I'm going to click on Linux, and it gives you this curl command. You copy that, open up terminal, and then you paste in that curl command right here. So very simple, paste that in, press enter, it's going to install Olama for you. I've already installed it, so I'll show you right here. If I type up Olama, it's going to give you all these commands that you can run with Olama. The important ones are pull and run because you want to pull a model to the machine. That means it's downloading the model. What are models? Let's go to the Olama website right here and under the link models, models are the AI, DeepSeek R1. There's Llama, there's a bunch of them here. And with DeepSeek, they have different sizes. The default is set to the 7 billion one. And my Raspberry Pi only has eight gigabytes of memory. So that's the one that I want to run. If I run anything higher, like it has the 6-inch 71B. That one is way too high, so I can't download that and run it with my Raspberry Pi. So what we do, we go back to terminal and we type Olama pull deep seek dash R1. And that will pull the model. As long as you type the model name, it will pull that model, meaning it will download it to your local machine. So after you pull that model, you can type Olama run deep seek dash R1. So I'm going to press enter and run this Olama DeepSeek R1 right now. And you see that it's processing the model and it's going to run it inside my terminal. And then I can just ask it whatever I want. So right here, see it says send a message. Now, if you're worried about any data being sent out on the internet, I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi right here. I'm going to disconnect. See, I'm off of the internet now. And uh, I want to show you that all of this is just running locally. You don't have to worry about anything. So here, we're going to ask it, in the movie Ready Player One, how many keys were needed? And uh, you're gonna see how fast or slow it's going to run here. It's thinking, it's it's saying right there, link thinking, okay, so I need to figure out how many keys. So it's giving you the process. And as you see with the eight gigabytes of memory on this Raspberry Pi, it is going a little bit slow, but it is running and it's running DeepSeek R1 right now. And if you're wondering if you have to run this in terminal every time you want to ask it a question, you don't have to. You can download from GitHub a lot of different UI for uh, Python, React, all of this, and then you can run it interactively on the web browser. My CPU, by the way, right here, it is running full speed on this Raspberry Pi. And uh, half of the memory is loaded into here with this um, deep seek R1. All right, so here's the answer. It's saying approximately 56 keys were needed in Ready Player One. And uh, that is way too many. Uh, it's counting every single key in the movie. So yeah, it was thinking too much into that. What I'm asking for is how many keys were needed to win? And uh, the answer is just three, because as you watch Ready Player One, you only need three keys to win the game. I created three keys. So to exit out of this, you just type slash buy like that. And if you want to see uh, all of the models that you pulled, you can say Olama list. And you'll see right here, I downloaded Quinn. I downloaded DeepSeek R1. 
So yeah, you can download any model you want. You can download Llama right here. Llama 3.2 is the latest right here. So right here for a different comparison, I'm going to connect my big monitor to my MacBook Pro right here. And uh, I'll show you how to run DeepSeek on here. And same thing, if I want to download for the uh, Mac OS, it actually gives you a downloaded file where you can install the desktop version. And then I'll show you right here, Olama runs right here, right up on the upper right tab of the um, monitor screen. It has the it's Olama thing right here. You, you can quit it if you want, but it sets it up so that when you log in, uh, Olama will be ready. So yeah, Linux is the only one where you have to run that uh, terminal command. And then same thing right here. I have terminal open. I'll make this larger so you can see. So if I do a llama right here, list uh, on this MacBook, I download a lot more. So I'll do a llama run deep seek R1. And then you'll see the performance on this one. So for this one, let's ask it another movie question. Um, in the 2011 movie, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, what was written on the black shirt of Lisbeth? And uh, you can see how fast this one thinks and runs because our MacBook Pro here is on the M2 chip. And look at that, it's just spitting out facts right there. And so it's a lot faster, as you can see, than the Raspberry Pi. And once again, this is just running on terminal. But right after this, I'm going to run my Next.js project to show you how it runs. All right, in the 2011 movie, The Girl with the Giant Tattoo, Elizabeth wears a black shirt adorned with the text, Lisbeth Sun. This is the part of her dragon tattoo symbolizing her name that's connected to the tradition of the giant tattoo in Sweden. All right, that, that was a different answer that I was expecting because there was another shirt that she was wearing and it has a profanity on it and I thought it was pretty funny. The black shirt she was wearing had a profanity written on it. What did it say? I'm thinking maybe this one, uh, it doesn't want to say the profanity word, so it's not going to reference it. But if you guys watch the movie, you know what I'm talking about. She wore a black shirt with a faded quote on it, and it's very funny in the movie. Your report. Just for me, it wasn't very entertaining. It wasn't meant to be. But yeah, look at how fast that ran compared to the Raspberry Pi. All right, so uh, now I have this project that I created in Next.js, and it's an image project. So I'll do npm run dev. And then I'll go to my localhost here, localhost 3000. And so right here, I created this Llama vision. And what I did was I downloaded Lava right here. Lava is a image processing model that you can use with Llama. So this Next.js project allows me to drop in an image right into the center here. I can select a model for it to uh, read from. And then the model processes the image and it lets me know what it sees in there by describing it. So, so I'm going to drag in this image right here. I just drop it in. It's processing it. And uh, this image I just found on the internet. And I, let's see what it says. The image shows a food item resembling a foot-long hot dog, which appears to be a popular stadium snack. That's true because this is Dodger Stadium right here. This is the Dodger Stadium dog. The hot dog is loaded with various toppings, including mustard, relish, possibly onions or sauerkraut, along with pickle spear. Uh, it's reading it very well. The packaging suggests it might be from a stadium vendor, considering the branding and plastic wrapping, which are common for quick food service at sporting events. That's right. It's at a sporting event. It's the Dodger Stadium hot dog right here. So uh, it's pretty good on that. And look how fast it processed that. So uh, let's do another one. And uh, this should be fun. I have a logo right here that you guys will recognize when I drop in. And we're going to see if it recognizes this logo. So <laughs> there we go. I put in the DeepSeek model. And I wonder how it's going to interpret this. The image shows an icon or a logo that appears to be a digital or mobile application icon. It features a stylized representation of a dolphin on the left side, suggesting some connection to marine life or ocean related content. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it might think it's a dolphin. I think it's a whale that DeepSeek is doing. The overall design is simple and likely intended to use as part of an application interface on a smartphone or tablet. All right, so that's uh, funny how I interpret that image. So I'm using Lava right here for it. And uh, let's try Llama 3.2 Vision. Llama is also an image processing. And let's put in the same logo and let's see how it interprets it in Llama Vision. 
All right, so llama vision took a lot longer to process this. It took like a whole minute. Lava took like 10 seconds. So that's impressive how lava took a lot faster, but this one seems a lot more detailed with what it's describing here. So let's see here, the image features a blue square with rounded corners containing a white whale icon. So it got it closer actually with llama because it was thinking about it more. And then it has all of these uh, features on the image, blue square, white well icon, stylized design, positioning. So I like this one a lot. Like it actually gave a better description. I think it was more descriptive, but it just took a little bit longer, which is fine because we want it to be as exact as it could be. So I'm gonna show you the code behind this right now on how I created this. Okay, so this is how it works when you're trying to program uh, any type of AI model using Olama. When you install Olama onto your desktop by downloading it onto any computer, whether it's Linux, Windows, or the Mac OS here that I have, Olama runs on localhost. And you can run it going to localhost colon 11434. And it has an API endpoint on this. So anytime I can reference this API, pass it through JSON data using any type of programming language I want, and it will return back a response with whatever um, I ask it. So if we have a localhost with an API endpoint, we can program it like uh, using Next.js right here. So And so I have a page right here, the local page for the app. I created this whole page and I have two models. I have an image model and I have a select model. Uh, for this model select, I'm basically calling the API endpoint as a uh, API, I think it's uh, get tags or something like that. And so it returns all of the models that I have installed onto my uh, my computer here, all the models that I did Olama pool. And that's all I'm doing. I'm calling this API endpoint 11434 API get tags, and it's giving me these model names. When I drop an image into here, I can process it. And then I pass another API to that and say, um, I tell it API, here's the model I'm using. I want you to process this image. And inside of the uh, image processor here, I have this command right here that says prompt, what is in this image? So I'm giving it a specific prompt already when I drop in a uh, image model. And then it, it processes it, it returns me the result. I take the JSON result of it and, uh, and then I just show it on screen. So I do all the Next.js stuff with it. So if you wanna see how to program, uh, you can go to a llama, you can go to GitHub right here on the link. So just keep scrolling down and then you'll see right here, REST API. And then it shows you right here how it's doing a curl command on it. So it's doing curl, the localhost 11434 API generate dash D. Uh, curl you can use inside of terminal. If I go in terminal, curl will get any type of uh, address you give it. And then you can pass in a, uh, a post in here or do a get, post, whatever you want. But inside of Next.js right here, we can do a fetch, but I'm actually using axios.post. I'm posting data to it, to the API generate endpoint. And then I'm passing through this JSON data right here that is I'm telling it. So, you know, I'll put all of this code onto my GitHub if you want to see this full code. And uh, I'll share with all of you guys if you want this exact Next.js program that I created here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. Leave a like if you do and you want to see me do more programming with AI, especially on this uh, mini PC that I built for my Raspberry Pi. I've been loving programming on it. Uh, so leave a like if you like that type of content. I'll create more and uh, leave a comment too because it helps out the algorithm for this video. And uh, I'm going to get back to creating more AI agents for my Raspberry Pi right here. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Mm -hmm.